Okay, welcome to a hallway hangout on um, performance considerations for block themes. We have a lovely crew gathered from across the WordPress project today. Um, it is January 10th, uh, 2023, which is cool to say. Um, this is meant to just be a casual and collaborative environment where we can chat about all things block themes and performance. Um, it cuts across multiple different teams from the corridor team, the core team, the performance team. Um, and so we're trying to bring things together and see what we can do to work better together and just kind of get a sense of the current problems and knowledge share. Um, to kick us off, I know there's a lot of us here, so let's keep these introductions really short if we can. Um, but let's go through and just give like brief intros, like no more than 30 seconds. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm recording from a cold. No more than 30 seconds. Um, kind of explaining your name, um, who you are, and then what team, um, if any, you're a part of um, in the Make WordPress space. Um, if you don't want to enter yourself or unmute for whatever reason, you can also drop into the chat. Um, yeah, there's a lot of us, so let's maybe actually instead of popcorn style, I think I'll keep track. <laughs> um, Riyadh's trying to join. So let's have um, Hector, do you mind starting and just giving name, who you're sponsored by, if you are a sponsored contributor, who you work for, and then what board team um, you're a part of? Sure. I'll make it quick. Hello, I'm Hector. I'm a sponsor by Automatic to work uh, in Core. And I spend my days in project, man project management stuff. So that's the TLDR. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Adam, let's have you go. Sure. I'm Adam Silverstein, sponsored by Google. Um, been contributing for a long time, various areas of Core. Right now, doing performance. I've also contributed quite a bit to Gutenberg back in the day. Um, that's me. Awesome. Emily, would you like to go? Sure. So I'm Emily, based in Manchester, UK. I work with Tenop, um, just very closely with Google. I'm a associate director of client delivery. So basically project manage the team here to work on the core performance side um, over at Tenop. Very cool. Um, Daisy. I'm Daisy Olson. I uh, am sponsored by Automatic. I work as a developer advocate kind of across a bunch of teams, but uh, focused primarily on themes. Awesome. Joseph Scott. Hi, I'm Joseph Scott. Uh, I lead the performance team at Automatic. So I actually uh, have some older history with WordPress core back in the day, but um, performance across Automatic and that obviously includes WordPress is where my focus is. Awesome. Uh, Jessica. Hi, I'm Jessica. Uh, I work at Extendify and I have contributed to various teams before, but I'm not on a specific team right now. Awesome. Uh, Simon. I, I uh, work at the Standard Media here in Denmark and uh, I'm just looking at the how to contribute. I've uh, worked on, uh, on AMP and various other performance uh, tasks for Google prior and now I'm just looking at how to get into the WordPress uh, ecosystem. Very cool. Feel free to ping um, <clears throat> myself, Daisy or Justin. Um, we've all done various developer relations type stuff as well as I think Adam might also be developer relations, but you're in the right place to hear about where to contribute. So good to have you Sounds here. Sounds good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to mess up this name. Piet Pietar? Piet. So sorry. Hi, I'm <laughs> No, it's, uh, I'm Piotr. Uh, I work with uh, XMBP. Uh, I'm a principal engineer at here, uh, mostly working on front end. Uh, I've been contributing to Core back in the days uh, and a bit to Gutenberg and Jetpack as well, uh, also to AMP uh, at some point. Awesome. Um, Andre. Hi, I'm Andre and been contributing to the Core Editor team for the past two years. I'm sponsored by Automatic and uh, been working on performance related uh, stuff since the past couple of months. Awesome. Uh, Justin. Uh, hi, I'm Justin Tadlock. I'm sponsored by Automatic um, to work on Core and I'm on a bunch of <laughs> Make teams. So I kind of bounce around a bit. Cool. Uh, Mukesh. Hello everyone. I'm Kaspanchal from India. I'm only I'm working on core and 
core performers and i work for tenup as a senior developer thanks wonderful ben hi i'm ben i am uh sponsored by automatic um working on gutenberg um also i have a history of working on themes stuff so i sort of fit between those two things and at the moment i'm focusing uh mostly on the navigation book sergio hey i'm Sergio. i work at automatic on uh, joseph's performance team as well so that includes all of our products and uh obviously the uh, wordpress open source project as well uh mostly client side my focus but uh, a little bit of server side too Felix. Hey, I'm Felix Arns. Uh, have been contributing to WordPress core for several years. Um, currently sponsored by Google and working together with um, Adam. Mostly, currently mostly on the performance team. Thank you, uh, Mike. Hello, uh, I'm Mike Granta. I'm uh, based in Tenerife, Spain. I I'm from XWP and I'm leading the performance initiatives uh, and spilling some of that information to what can go into core. Uh, the only team I've been paying attention to is the performance team in core or the performance labs or <laughs> how you call that. Awesome. Uh, Didier? So Hi, sorry. I'm uh, Didier uh, from Belgium and based in West Africa. I'm working from the XWP and a front end engineer working on performance. Awesome. Johnny, did you go? I don't think you did. No. Hi, I'm Johnny Harris. I'm a WordPress core committer. Um, not sponsored by anyone at the moment. Um, I worked on various parts of core, including Gutenberg, Multisite, a bunch of other stuff. Currently, I'm a team lead on the for object caching in the performance initiative. Okay, cool. Um, Joe, if you would like to introduce yourself. Sure. I'm Joe. I'm a senior web engineer at Tenup based in Cornwall in the UK. And I've been working on the performance lab and in the core performance team. Lovely. We have quite a crew here. Tonya, will you uh, close us out? Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Tanya Mark. I work in core full time, uh, which includes also Gutenberg. I'm just here to observe uh, and listen in today. So. Awesome. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining. This is wonderful. It's, it seems like we have a nice smattering of Tenup, Extendify, XBP, Automatic, Google, um, probably more stuff that I have just forgotten. But um, it's really wonderful to have everyone here from across different teams. So I want to just start by saying that. Um, before we go further, I figured we could kind of pause for a moment. And I know whenever these kinds of things come up, um, sometimes there's immediately a topic that someone's like, if this doesn't get brought up, I'm really going to be upset. <laughs> so if there's anything immediate top of mind where you came here with a very specific purpose or something you wanted to discuss right out the gate, um, I'd love to focus this on current work or relevant work to what's happening either around the last WordPress release um, or coming up with WordPress 6.2. Um, but yeah, I would love to know if there's anything that someone wanted specifically to talk about. Um, otherwise, I think it would be great to awesome theme JSON performance. I might have to put Andre on the spot there. Johnny, is there anything specific you want to talk about there? Yeah, so 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 uh, Andre and me and Felix have been working um, very uh, doing a ton of work around theme theme JSON performance. So for those that don't know. Um, Obviously, we, we added theme JSON in uh, 5.8, but um, the code to parse those files is incredibly expensive and was running many, many times in, uh, on a single page load. Um, uh, one chunk of code was running like 38,000 times, um, which was chewing through um, a lot of CPU cycles. So during the uh, 6.1 release we did a, I did a bunch of like performance analysis around that other people also did the same analysis and discovered that there was some major issues around that so we did we put some emergency fixes in uh, later RCs of 6.1 there's also been some stuff in 6.1.1 6 as well but um, there's been a lot of work around trying to make that theme 
theme JSON performance and um, to add a developer API so that people can easily uh, detect whether a theme has theme JSON and to access that data in a performant way. Andre, is there anything else you want to add to that? Is that a good summary? Um, yeah, there are, I mean, I can share what I've been working on as well in this area. Um, the, yeah, in the 6.1 um, release, there were some issues around caching this data coming from theme JSON, And that's the point that what I was interested in uh, reviewing you know, the performance um, of this particular subsystem. Uh, so I created this tracking issue for you know compiling the you know all the tasks and, and efforts we could do to improve this and uh, uh, yeah uh, a bunch of folks have volunteered to work in this area um, so we can if more folks are interested in this we can uh, dig deeper. Yeah, before we go too further, Adam, I saw you have a little tiny hand raised in the corner. Is there anything you wanted to? Chime in on around this. You're muted still. I was, answering your, I was answering your question from earlier about like about points to address. One sort of just generally that I think we're all here for is just um, how to avoid performance regressions coming from Gutenberg into core, um, just in, as a general thing. And then something very specifically I want to make sure we pay attention to is making sure that we don't introduce uh, regressions in classic themes. We're very focused on block themes, and that's super exciting for us. But I think 95% of WordPress still runs or more on classic theme uh, themes. And I, it's really important that when we make changes in Gutenberg that are designed for block themes, that we're not negatively affecting uh, classic themes. So I think we have that's something I want to make sure we pay attention to. Yeah, thank you for both of those. Those are both um, great topics. Another topic sort of related mm -hmm. to what Adam just said was around database performance. So with so much of sites being configurable and being using custom post types like w, WP template and WP template part and uh, global styles, that means more and more calls to the database per single page load. Um, and just today I was working on uh, an issue to try and help load those in a single database call instead of many, many database calls. So uh, I'm just not regressing on the number of database queries per page because that obviously slows down the page and slows down database performance. Awesome. These are a lot of topics. Let's, um, I think let's stay around the theme JSON performance. I think we can talk about that in terms of maybe even what happened with 6.1 because I think that touches on some of the classic theme considerations as well as um, how to avoid performance regressions. Um, so yeah, I'd be curious. I'm just here to kind of facilitate where I think you all have been doing the work. Um, so I don't know if there's any specifically knowledge sharing wise or Andre, if we want to, I can share my screen and open up this um, issue if you'd like to talk through it more. Is that sure, something you um, Sure, uh, I can share the context I know. Um, well, for uh, for context, I was on sabbatical as of the 6.1 release, which means that I was working on this. So when I came back, that's right where the uh, beta process um, started. And through that process, there was uh, one issue uh, there was uncovered in in the process that was not brought up in Gutenberg. Um, the reasons why that, that that wasn't discovered in Gutenberg, you know, is a bit difficult to explain. But the fact is that it was raised in during that cycle. So uh, we, you know, we didn't have a lot of time to uh, to investigate and you know uh, fix the root issues. So what we did was just trying to. Um, the you know the performance curves of that. Uh, I think the that ticket uh, that I'm sure should have some of the history for six one. Um, and yeah, uh, so uh, that connects with my question and also what Adam uh, commented on you know having a baseline test so. CI jobs that tell us, okay, these are the numbers that we want to track, and you know this is the impact that a given PR has on that on those numbers, uh, and we don't have that. So it's it was through manual process that we discovered these issues. So um, essentially, with the uh, issue tracking issue that Anna is sharing is that 
uh, my attempt to you know clarify in this particular subsystem what are the things that we need to fix um, and and then one of the other things that I would like to see uh, is how can we create some um, you know tooling that help us to address this sooner both in Gutenberg but also in Rupert score um, the fact that I'm talking about thin JSON is because I'm not familiar but there might be other subsystems that have the same issues and uh, we don't find them right so having something that really tell us this is the you know the, the number that we want to track and this is how it evolves through time is going to be useful and for context uh, you know I can share what we do in the Gutenberg editor. Uh, we have a set of tracks that we, in each release, we have some performance tests to compare the, the how those uh, statistics evolve through each release and comparing also, I think the last uh, WordPress version and things like uh, typing or things like the time it takes uh, a specific big post to load and parse the blocks, all those things we go through uh, in a regular basis, every every two weeks, and if there is something that is you know has a big impact, in the six month cycle and uh, in the future as well. One one thing I'd I'd like to highlight as well is some of these performance issues were not discovered in the Gut in Gutenberg and are difficult to discover in Gutenberg. Currently, the workflow is you have code in the Gutenberg project and it gets copied over. But um, how we override core functions is uh, a little fragile at the moment. And um, it's not always easy to spot performance regressions in the Gutenberg plugin. It's only once they end up in core that you see the, the problems. That, that's Again, that's a, that's a problem with multiple teams of how we override PHP and how we uh, how Gutenberg is treated as like the, the first uh, part of the development process. And, and I have a problem with that, but um, we don't get real world data using Gutenberg because real sites don't use the Gutenberg plugin. So there's always some overhead of doing the overriding of, of, of core functions. So unfortunately we do have to do, we can do some performance testing on the Gutenberg plugin, but we'll also have to do it on core as well because Gutenberg and core are not exactly the same. They're not a one-to-one -one parity. Felix, I see your hands raised. Uh, yeah, I, I just had a quick follow-up question for Andre. Um, so one, th I think the some of those regressions that we saw in six point one, or at least most most of those that I I saw that were uh, server side performance, and as far as far as what I'm what I've seen from Gutenberg performance tracking is mostly. JavaScript based performance tracking, which would affect mostly, I guess, the editor. But I wanted to ask, is there any, um, like, I don't know, load time performance tracking from the front end or things like something like that in place? Or is is that not? In, in, because in, if not, I think that's, that's something that we should look at. Yeah, that's a good question. And so to provide a bit to provide a bit more details on, on, on the issue, the uh, the thing happened because of how block registration works different in WordPress core and Gutenberg. Um, so it was uh, something uh, really difficult to to happen. And the fact that Gutenberg registers blocks after the the WordPress runtime does that uh, sort of hide the issue, right? So there was no uh, you know performance uh, related stats. Uh, for front end in Gutenberg, there's no also in, in WordPress core, and that's why you know uh, we didn't catch it earlier. So I think this is something that uh, we should add. For what it's worth, we yeah we started looking at setting up an environment where we can start getting basic performance tests for like WordPress core on, for example, for example, on every commit or something like that. So I think that's potentially something that. Um, um, I mean, it's, it's nothing that exists yet, but we've talked with a few other core developers about it. Um, and uh, that's potentially something that could be expanded to Gutenberg as well. That would be great. Uh, one thing that, um, yeah, as I mentioned in, in my in the introduction, uh, I'm interested in you know trying to understand what are the metrics that uh, we can create for WordPress. 
there is one obvious one, which is time to first bite, right? Uh, this you know, is very common in the industry and something that could help us here. Um, we need to create tools for that, but be beyond time to first bite, we can uh, like trying to um, have more granular settings like um, uh, numbers, such as like particular hooks uh, that run for classic themes that don't run from block themes or this sort of things, right? Like for evaluating more, for having more granular evaluation of uh, the evolution of performance. So yeah, any effort on that direction, uh, I'm gonna try to help as much as possible. Um, Tony, do you wanna jump in? Sure, thanks. Uh, going back to a comment from earlier from Johnny, I just kind of want to make sure that we're thinking about that iteration happens much faster on the Gutenberg side and then uh, is backported over into core, but core is only releasing on a, uh, a much longer and lesser schedule uh, per year. So when we think about performance and how we can capture some of these regressions and testing, we want to think about strategies of how we can do that on a faster basis. Uh, thinking about in Gutenberg, how can we test instead of waiting until it gets into core, but also then retesting once it gets into core. So though it's difficult now, can we think about strategies for being able to test on the Gutenberg side uh, and catch it sooner than later? That's all. Back to you, Ann. Awesome. Thank you. That's a great point. Um, Adam, I saw you had a hand raised again. Sure. Um, I was just going to say, yeah, really great point about needing the testing in Gutenberg, even if we build out like what we were thinking of as core automated performance testing um, with metrics like time to first byte or maybe like total load time for the WordPress stack. I think we still need to run those in Gutenberg because like as I'm understanding from this conversation, how Gutenberg loads is very different. The other thing that came up during the performance regression analysis that I wanted to just bring up was how the code technically is ported from Gutenberg to core made it very difficult to track back where the regressions were introduced. And a part of this is because all of the core commits were made on a single ticket, I believe, um, then referencing the Gutenberg tickets sort of as the commits were made. But what this meant was that as working in core to try to track down a regression that was introduced in Gutenberg, that we had to go through this very, very long track ticket that had many, many different tickets <laughs> committed to it with all different kinds of things. And then try to go back from that to Gutenberg to figure out and maybe this is moot because we're going to solve, we're going to find the problems in Gutenberg before they make it to core. But just to point out that this, the way that we're currently porting code from Gutenberg to core makes it then very difficult to then track that code back. I don't, I'm not, I don't have a suggestion for a way to improve it, but just to mention that it is a problem when we're doing it currently. Yeah, Tony, I'm going to throw it back to you because I know your team is thinking a lot about um, exactly. that exact effort. Yeah. <laughs> okay. One of the things I forgot to mention when I introduced myself to everybody is I am sponsored by Automatic. My team works full time in core. We're focused on uh, the back end domain primarily, but also helping uh, to ease some of the problems that do happen trying to backport changes from Gutenberg into core. And one of the things I wanted to note was uh, you see Andrew Oz has been working with the teams to do backports sooner and smaller, smaller little backports of changes, get them in throughout the uh, development cycle once alpha opens up, if they're ready, backport them, if they're ready, backport them, uh, instead of waiting until the end and then uh, a week before feature freeze, boom, here comes this great big commit of things, which makes it very difficult to track. It also makes it very difficult to do code reviews if these PRs are massive in size. So doing it quicker, smaller, smaller iterations and continuously throughout the development cycle in core can help with some of that. Felix, back to you. Um, yeah, that's, uh, so Tonya, that sounds, that's, that sounds definitely like a great great path forward um we I, I pasted one of those one of those tickets that i looked at last release where it was just like prs over prs and comments over comments and that um i i think this makes it like in like adam says it makes it hard to um yeah even spot even spot potential issues not saying that we would have all spotted them for sure but um yeah there is and it, because it's also because it's so many prs um Kind of buried in this one in this one ticket it's hard to um 
yeah, it's hard to uh, even even find them, right? And and have have make sure that all of those PRs, is particularly the bigger PRs, get reviewed by a bunch of people. I would say, um, I think that's that's something that um, yeah, what you're saying, Tonya, would would definitely help that. Um, I I also want to mention another point that I ran into at some point recently is that. Um, moving, yeah, merging everything very late also has problems because I, I've, there are there are occasional situations where you need something from Gutenberg to be merged to core to fix something else that is only in core, and then um, that doesn't work if you wait. Like that doesn't that doesn't work realistically if every all code from Gutenberg only gets merged at the very end. So that's another benefit would be another benefit of doing it more iteratively. Tonya, back to you. Yeah, just one more follow up on that too, just for awareness. It sounds like one I need to make a uh, make post <laughs> as well. Sorry about not bringing this out. We've just kind of been running an experiment before the holidays just to see if this works. But I will take uh, the action of making sure that a make post comes out. One of the other things that we're working on is making sure Gutenberg backend code is core ready runs against all the tests, runs against all the lints, runs against all the same things so that when the backports are ready to go, uh, that it's core ready. It's going to help us when we do all the review and as core committers that help us from there too. I just wanted to quickly make that note uh, and I will get a make post put out for us too. So that we're all on the same page. Thank you. Yeah, I was about to say that's, that's going to be huge, I think, to have out in the open and to start to shift some of these processes as you were suggesting. Um, Johnny, see your hand. Yeah, it's also, again, we're, we're talking a lot about one of the pain points is the, the process, right? Getting things from Gutenberg into core. One of, one of my biggest pain points, I literally had this today when I was working on something. I was working on some core functionality to add some performance to some functions for block themes. But those, those functions have been in core since 5.8, so three versions now, and are no longer in the Gutenberg plugin. It's unclear to me, like, do I make the change in Gutenberg and then over and force the override in Gutenberg and then do it there? Or do I do it? You know, at what point does it go from Gutenberg into core and then core owns it? Like, that seems to be very unclear and that needs to be documented a little bit better at the moment. Like, it's, where, where do you make the changes? And, and it, you know, I have had multiple people ask me, you know, where do I make these changes? And I, I don't know. It seems to be a bit of a misalignment with a lot of people that work on this, where the changes need to happen, how they, how they happen. That one can kind of be a big, big topic, and it might take us away from talking about the performance side of things. So how about if we get together outside of here, and uh, maybe we can come up with a way of documenting it or do a make post so that we can have a discussion about that too. Does that sound good to everybody? Yeah, th this, is, this is a much larger conversation, isn't it? And, yeah, it is. Yep. Um, and I don't want to hang this up, because we want to talk about performance on this call, obviously. But I think part of the problem of solving some of these problems is working at that process yeah. and to be able to get accurate data from Gutenberg and from core. That's something that I think we we're all agreeing on on this call, but um, it is worth talking about in school as well because it's, it slowed us down. Definitely. Yeah. This is, I mean, this is a great thing to, to have come up from this discussion anyways. We can have a list of things where it's like, this is this kind of stuff we need to iterate on um, now that we're all in the same room. Um, I do want to touch on too, like how to avoid specifically in classic themes, just to harken back to what Adam raised. Um, so if folks have thoughts there as we're discussing this as well, um, when it comes to tests and ways to catch things, I think that would be, be good to talk about. Um, and then I know on my end, wanting to talk about block themes and core web vitals is another thing that has come up before, but Felix, what do you have? Um, just one, one last point from, from my end on the, oh, yes, please. Um, on the, um, one one thing that's also different in Gutenberg is some like WordPress core typically requires always about to have a bunch of um, PHP unit tests on on issues or on PRs and that's in Gutenberg I know that that's sometimes hard if not impossible because it doesn't have the whole code base like like some of those changes kind of 
kind of, some of those changes are harder to test in Gutenberg, I think, than in core. But and also, oh, I think overall the overall the development process in Gutenberg is a lot more um, like rapid than WordPress core development, which means and I understand that like you don't always want to have like the hundred percent test coverage, and that's not what we ask. That's not what I'm asking for. But um, I think it's it's then I think that we need to, we need to think about ways to make sure when the code gets merged into core at the at the latest, it is it has test coverage to to a certain degree, and that's and when those changes from Gutenberg up just ported over, that that's often missing. Yeah, real quick, that's also part of the make sure that the code is core ready, which includes tests. Yep, absolutely. I'll make sure that's in the in the post for us as well. Thanks. So. Sounds great. What thoughts do folks have around ensuring that we are avoiding regressions with classic themes as well? Because I do think there is both a need to have an emphasis on block themes and on making sure that the latest and various is as performant as possible. But I also agree that it can't come at the cost of classic themes. And Adam is sharing an example, which I will show on my screen. Let me pull it up. This is the Giant. one in particular that I that I worked on that I was thinking of. I'm sure there's probably other examples that maybe are better, but this was just some CSS that winds up getting enqueued kind of universally across themes, regardless of whether you use the button element on a classic theme, suddenly now every classic theme in the world has this new mm. CSS embedded in it that's unused. That's just not really great for us to do that across the ecosystem. It's huge. Like we, we are, these are huge decisions we're making. You know, we're like, oh, we'll just add some CSS for some buttons, but it's that's a really big deal. Mm. That's like tens of millions of sites that now have CSS on them that they don't need. It's a small yeah. little bit of CSS. It's just a few lines of code, but like that all adds up every time we do that. Um, yeah, it still didn't get fixed either. So <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, I was like, I'm gonna add this to the list to follow up on. Um, this also reminds me of the Styles Engine work that I know is being done um, as well. It can probably be brought into this conversation, but Johnny. So one thing I've been doing um, for the last couple of releases has been running profiles against uh, all the RC, all the betas and RCs. So I've been counting the number of database queries, a number of hits to cache, um, time to first byte, and a few other characteristics as well. And through that, we found a, a number of issues. So um, at the moment, I'm doing it manually, literally just reloading the page and copying some the data from my my tools into a, a spreadsheet. I can I can share the spreadsheet, but having proper, you know, running some level of automated test suite against it, generating a spreadsheet, and then you can do comparisons of different RCs, different commits, and where you can see the graph sort of going up or down, that's, that's massively useful. Database queries are normally a sign that something is loading that shouldn't be loading. For example, on every page request, there are a bunch of requests to all the image sizes, even though they're, they're not needed. So that's, I, I got, I found three database queries at the options table that, that are not needed on every page request from database. But there are a bunch of other stuff like what Adam just said, where it's not uh, obvious from database queries that there's a performance regression. That's a front end, you know, adding CSS to the page is a front end regression. And there may be ones that don't have, like, we had some issues around um, uh, translations. So translations not loading properly, and that ends up in a, a massive regressions as well, which would not result in extra, extra database queries. So I was saying that the database queries are a, a, a canary in the mine, but we need to find better ways to spot these uh, performance pressures. I don't want to put you two on the spot, Joseph or Sergio, but I'd be curious what you all think about some of the stuff just thinking about from, I think, the, the side of managing this for automatic on the performance side. Is that unfair to put you all on the spot? Um, sure. Well, one of the things uh, we had previously, I, I had previously volunteered for was the measurement side. Unfortunately, I got had some priority shifts internally at automatic and got pulled away to some other things. But it sounds like that is still um, a significant need is figuring out how to um, 
not only do the measurements, but then you know be tracking them over some some amount of granularity, whether that's per commit, per day, per release, you know, or all of the above, um, is is something that still sounds like it's needed both for core and for the Gutenberg plugin. Um, yeah, those are not um, at, as I think everybody probably agree at this point, since it hasn't happened. There's that's not a trivial thing to figure out. Uh, I should probably add that uh, a lot of the infrastructure that we've developed internally to help us with things like uh, performance on the WordPress.com service uh, are mostly uh, RUM tools, so uh, real user monitoring tools, which would probably not apply very well to this situation. Uh, they're mostly tools to use in production live with the whatever the current version that is being deployed to users is and are not particularly suitable to uh, you know ongoing development and branches and all of that sort of stuff so a completely different approach would be needed for this sort of thing thank you yeah both of you very helpful felix uh one thing one thing in that regard that we've been thinking about is potentially use at least for the server side performance to use uh, server timing metrics there is essentially yeah essentially um measure simply use like um measure the set to mill milliseconds that certain processes on the server side take and um we can expose them in the server timing header which is like this specification to output back end performance metrics so that they're available in the front end as well and those could be sent somewhere um maybe something like this gutenberg um dashboard i think it was something like code health versatile app or something right there is this gutenberg performance dashboard and potentially we could have something like that uh, for core as well that could receive um that could receive uh, server timing metrics from wordpress core and what i've i've, I've looked into those I've, I've researched the server timing metrics for a while and they are fairly reliable or in terms of not having a ton of variance across different runs, which also helps um, spot regressions or in a, in a more reliable way. That's, that's for example, not the case with like time to first byte, which is really kind of the most meaningful metric. But on the other hand, it's a metric which fluctuates so much between different runs that it's hard to use that as a, as a reference point. So maybe that's this approach of server timing metrics could be could be useful for for that tracking. That's really useful uh, because um, one of the things that um, you know over the past uh, few weeks testing this is like depending on the tool you use, you have wildly different results. Like for example, uh, I was working in a in a PR, um, and if I use the Xdebug profiler, which has a lot of you know, variance and, you know, the results aren't, you can't reproduce the same results doing the same experiment. And then I, I realized that I had this PR that improved my 300 milliseconds, which is a 40% improvement. But if you do that experiment in the browser and use the developer tools, you, you notice that it's only a, a 15 millisecond improvement. And this is a big change, right? Like if you look at PRs that have less impact when you use Xdebug Profiler, like PRs that improve like 10 milliseconds. How do you know how that translates to, uh, you know, the time to first byte in real users, right? So yeah, that's my, my question about what do you think, uh, how do we mesh, how should we measure um, our PRs to make sure that, you know, they reflect real improvements in, in production? And you know what statistics we should should we use to to do that? Oh, and there's so many more variables than that because you can run it on PHP 5.6 to 8.2. You can have object caching enabled. You can use MariaDB. You can use MySQL. You can use Nginx. You can have opcache enabled. There's any performance metrics would need to have a matrix of different server configurations to be able to be realistic. There's no one configuration to rule them all for WordPress sites.
Yeah, for I don't sure. know who raised their hand first. Sorry, I, I want to pay attention to the hand raising. If you want. <laughs> Let's do, yeah, Felix, sorry. I think you started. And then um, we'll do Adam. Yeah, for sure. We need, we would need, if, if we, for sure, we need to run those tests in one environment and we can, I mean, we can use them. We can use different environments, like you say, Johnny, like with met metrics. Um, but we need to look at the regressions individually because, of course, they may be different and and they may be different, like to a different degree in the, in the depending on the environment. Um, but and I think when it comes to over the the overall impact to assess that, I think what we can use is to measure, for example, using the server timing, we can measure the entire load time of WordPress, which is is fairly consistent when you go through when you use those metrics and let's say let's say they are let's say it's always like 150 milliseconds for entirety of wordpress then we know if you make a change that's is a 10 millisecond improvement or regression that's already fairly significant or, although uh, of, of course if you have like a 1 millisecond then it's not so not so significant but there is there is i think i think using this m mechanism gives us a re um, uh, reliable overall load time. But I, I would recommend that our default performance environment is the worst case scenario. So the lowest version of PHP we support, the lowest version of MySQL, because it's all very good adding you know, shaving off a couple of milliseconds of performance here. But with the newer versions of PHP, there's so much performance improvements that you may not see those micro optimizations you know, that, that much. But on a an older version and on the on a very you know you've got to think about the worst shared hosting that these these sites can be on is is what we want to be targeting here to make sure it's performant there as well and you'll really see these php micro optimizations in in older versions of php adam what did you have to share I, I just want to be conscious of not hogging the conversation since I've spoken a lot. I'm not going to speak anymore. Um, but I just wanted to say, or I'll try not to speak too much anymore, just to say briefly, like, I feel like a performance, like automated performance testing, really the goal is just to capture major regressions, like catch them before we go too much further. So it, it could be a very basic metric and we would still catch them. I think we have to acknowledge that small changes in performance we're not going to catch with automated testing and also they're normal in development. As we add features, we do expect some re some reduction in performance. What we really want to try to avoid is major regressions and somehow catching those earlier in the development cycle. So I just don't think we should let the like perfect be the enemy of good enough. Like, we should get something in place that captures some metrics, even if that can be minimal. And then over time, maybe we can improve that with additional metrics or you know monitoring that that as we learn what, what we can do. But I think just starting with something basic could be super helpful, just in the case of what we saw in 6.1, for example. Agreed, thank you. I love like, to get into a practical space where <laughs> it's like, what can we reasonably do right now? Um, I wanna be cognizant of time. I figured we can go for upwards to another 30 minutes, but people also can drop whenever they'd like. Um, I personally think calls start to get to pretty derailed if you go much longer than that. Um, so I do want to keep this pretty contained and we can always do another one of these if we need to, but just a quick time check as we're coming up on about 45 minutes into the call. Um, right now, it seems like the general topic is what and how we measure performance. So if folks have other thoughts there, um, I'm also taking notes and we'll be recapping this. So in case anyone else is furiously trying to scribble things down. Okay, if, otherwise, if we don't have anything further here, I do wanna make sure we cover, uh, especially since we have some Google folks on here, um, core web vitals and block themes and kind of what parts of core can be improved out of the box and um, just discussing kind of what can be done there. Um, I don't know if anyone has thoughts. Adam, you're welcome to speak as much as you want. <laughs> I'll, I'll jump in on this. So I'm cool. at the moment, um, because of the JSON theme parsing issues, block themes are significantly slower than classic themes. So my focus is to get them to be, the goal is to get them as performant as possible, right? Um, and I want them to be par on par with classic themes. But once that's done, I think block themes have an amazing, you have an amazing opportunity to do some uh, some performance work there because 
unlike a, a classic theme where you all you know is the current uh, template part you're on because everything's a block and you can parse that all and have all your markup before uh, headers are sent you can do some cool stuff like you can prefetch image assets you can ensure that images that are above the fold are not lazily loaded that they're loaded eagerly um we can do there's so many different things that once you know the entire markup of the page before the headers are sent there's so much stuff there's so many opportunities there um and it opens so many op you know, opportunities for us i'm really excited about once we got all this theme json stuff done we can really do some really cool stuff I don't know if anyone else has any. I know, Ben, you're on the theme side of things, but I also know that's kind of a different angle. So I just want to kind of give a pause for a second. Joseph. I I forget. I'm sorry. I, I don't recall all the details, but there was one issue that came up uh, that Sergio and I ran into while we were looking at some things. Um, regarding lazy loading LCP images. Um, there had been a fix in, it's probably been a year now in WordPress core in terms of not lazy loading uh, what looks like uh, potential LCP candidates. Um, and that never, that didn't make it to block themes. So we announced a fix, but it only fixed classic themes. And as I recall, there somebody did catch this. Um, and so it's pending for the next release, uh, if I recall correctly. I'm sorry, I don't have all the details in front of me, but it's that sort of split thing that um, measurements and catching regressions and stuff like that's gonna have to take into account that we are gonna have to do at least some amount of variant testing between different conditions um, so that, fixes don't only half apply. If someone has a reference to also what's gonna make it into the next release, I'd like to make sure it does. <laughs> Nothing like a fix not making it. I sort of thought that was fixed for for block theme, so I'm I'm a little unsure. Maybe Felix has more more info, but um, but that is a great example of something that we need to fix everywhere for sure. And yeah, ho hopefully, like like Johnny was saying, like potentially block themes could do a better job with this than. than mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking for the track ticket right now. I'm going to post it here once I find it. Um, Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, this um this is a good point. This is another good point. Like like Adam, you just said that we this. A block theme with all the block context will have a much better chance of spotting the right image as the LCP image um, than what we're doing right now in Core, which is just parsing all the images out of a blob of content. Um, and that's, I think that's something where, yeah, the block themes will be really beneficial. Are there other spaces that you all could see being beneficial to dig into on the performance side for block themes? Seems like there's some good ideas being thrown out right now. I mean, the the two things that come to mind for me are are like um, script script and uh, resource loading, like CSS file loading, like how we're moving that to theme JSON, making sure that we can properly defer scripts as we introduce that as a capability into core. Um, and then the other thing is font loading. Um, I know there's an active effort to work on on a font API, and I I've tried to follow that, um, but but just making sure that we we at least enable people to do that in the most performant way possible, even if that's not necessarily what we choose as our default. Just making sure that that's that is super easy for for developers to achieve. I don't have a specific recommendation. I just know it's an area that we need to pay attention to. Thank you, John. Whoever put that link in there. Yeah. Okay. yeah there's options or possibly around like lazily loading things as well. So we're currently currently lazily loading images, but. Could we lazily load CSS? So if a if a block is down the edge, you know, in the footer of a page, I, I know the CSS when you're when you're doing that, it might need some JavaScript 
but um but there's, there's some opportunities there as well um and maybe like like just loading some critical path css in the header so you can because again because we know the markup of the page we can we can just load what you know css that's needed just to render the header there's possibilities around that as well I'm probably going to have to follow up after this and make sure we open up all these ideas. <laughs> this would be really good to follow up on, at least track and have defined um, so that when folks have time, they can kind of loop through. Because I think that's part of it too, is I think there's a lot of interesting ideas that have been shared, but then starting building out prototypes and actually figuring that stuff out would be pretty neat. I don't know if I could make it into the form slot plugin or not, but. Um, Again, being cognizant of time. Um, I one of the things I actually want to bring up too that I think is kind of tied into all this is around the different teams. I feel like there's, from my perspective, there's core, core editor, and performance that all kind of swirl around this. There probably are others um, and you know, maintainers that also get involved with this. But I'm curious, just because it seemed like there was prior discussion during the release cycle in the performance channel around like, well, we need someone from the core editor side and kind of confusion, I think, around how best to work together. Um, so I don't know if folks wanted to discuss kind of that side of things, but that's definitely on my mind is, is the kind of how, um, and whether there's interest in running kind of one of these again, um, just to kind of keep the conversation going as we get closer potentially to 6.2. So to make it a bit more practical, um, maybe jumping on and talking about performance related to 6.2, um, in particular, maybe doing some like testing on a call and kind of going through things, um, not quite sure, but just trying to think of different ideas and ways that we can ping each other and be a bit more involved. Um, I know in general, if there are things in the performance channel, kind of porting them over into the corridor channel often helps. And then there's also like release specific channels. Um, we also don't have a performance role on the release squad. And so one of the things having been on a couple of the last releases, um, that's always on my mind is potentially like the, the work that gets done or stuff that gets poured into releases is considering kind of really specific roles. So I wanted to throw that out there too, because in preparation for this call, it was something that was on my mind is potentially having someone who is um, looking at the release from a very specific, even though each person on the squad should be paying attention to those things. Um, I think it could be kind of neat to explore performance related role. I'm totally just throwing that out there, even though <laughs> Hasn't been discussed before. And Hector, I know you wrote, you wrote the 6.2 release squad, but I think that could be interesting. Johnny, what do you have? Sorry, I keep talking, but I have lots of things to say. Um, when it comes to like working together as teams, uh, I think, and this, is, this isn't anyone's fault, but sometimes I, I will ping the editor. You know, I don't really consider myself just the performance guy. I'm a Gutenberg person, a core person. I, I, wanna, I don't want to feel like there's like, teams or sides or whatever whatever here we're all trying to make wordpress better and we just work on different things but if you're going to ping someone from another team you really have to give them the time to respond i got pinged a bunch of times during the various releases and then because i've got my own stuff i'm working on i don't have time to look at it straight away sometimes it can take a couple of days a week for me to be able to get to it by the time i got to it it was merged performance reviews take a long time because it may seem like I just say this is good but I may have spent three or four hours bashing it with various performance tools to to give you that thumbs up uh, emoji um, like performance takes time even with automated tools it does take time to do this stuff and if you want if you want feedback from the performance team you have to give us the time to to review it and 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 work with you don't i know gutenberg is very like rapid development and things get merged the second that it's approved but you're not going to get performance um feedback from us if you don't give us time to give us the proper time to, to do the profiling so maybe like if you know that a change has a performance impact ping us early put it up as a draft pr um and yeah just work work with us we're, we're, I, I want I don't want to fix this late and stress out I, I'm I'm more than happy to be involved earlier in the process yeah um Tonya the thing I do okay. want to note is is the project is large um and we also need to be thinking about making sure that we don't introduce bottlenecks in 
uh, relying on one or two people to be able to come in and review things. Uh, in Gutenberg, we have the ability to go and iterate. So we can merge things, come back, when a person with specific set of skills can come back and say, okay, we're going to take a look at this. One of the things that I've asked my team and people that I coach and work with is if I get pinged on something and I don't have the time and it gets merged, I still come back and I take a look and then I can follow up and say, okay, we need to open up another PR to fix what I have found. Uh, and then that way we're not slowing progress. It's just something to think about how can we as the project itself find ways to still iterate fast, but then have fast iterations to follow up um, with whatever needs to be addressed, whether it's core compatibility, whether it's performance, whether it's this, whether it's that, needing more tests, uh, instead of saying we need to have all these ducks in a row to be able to merge things, start to think about how we as contributors can still achieve what needs to be achieved for the best of our project and for our users out there, but still go in a fast way without blocking work. Plus one, <laughs> if you have a little plus one. Um, Thierry, I, I'm so sorry if I mispronounced your name. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, I think like we, we realizing that there's a lot of opportunities to uh, improve performance, but also improve uh, monitoring and measurement to avoid regression. And, you know, there's a long way to go. And I don't think that we will fix it over two weeks. Uh, you know, the end goal may be to have a lot more granular uh, processes and measurements so that we avoid having one big giant task before release. But like I said, it's going to take time. And, and I think that, you know, starting with baby steps, first making sure that before something is released, at least we have some So to, to your comments and uh, this time I misspell <laughs> or, or don't pronounce your name properly, having maybe a performance role in the release team would be really good. And then, you know, as we continue this uh, discussion and improve performance measurements at a more granular level, I, I believe this task will be uh, less and less significant because of course, you know, it would be done on an ongoing basis. So. Yeah, I, I think that we should look at like the short term plan and the long term goal goals and, and, and work towards that. Agreed. Yeah, I, I'm very curious about a performance role. And I, I think just being mindful of time, um, I do want to kind of move into a space of talking about next steps and just kind of wrapping up um, what I've heard uh, thus far. So on my end, I think kind of coming out of this, I want to have a post where sharing the notes, but then also some key areas that have come up um, around both avoiding large regressions, having improved monitoring, um, discussing the process and having more continual merges between when things are ready between Gutenberg and core, um, potentially just getting that documented and clear. So if someone's trying to contribute to performance, they can also kind of get started a bit sooner. Um, Tony, I know you mentioned doing a post on make probably make core cross posted yeah. to make performance. Yeah, around like the, the work your team's doing, that's awesome um, around yeah, getting I'll, those smaller. I'll share it too with multiple people here on this call so that we can get a review of it for a post, okay? That would be awesome, yeah. And then also um, I will follow up after and suggest the performance lead role on the 612 um, post and see if we can do something there. Uh, previously, we did that with the core or triage lead. There wasn't a role for that. We just added it in in the, I think that was 5.9 or 6.0 release, um, or 6.0. So I think there's probably room there to experiment. Um, and I think that could be a good next step. And then I will also follow up personally around um, when WordPress 6.2 gets underway, I think it'd be really good to jump on kind of another call with anyone who wants to, to talk practically about WordPress 6.2 and talk about all these themes um, around this release. And so we can kind of get into more nitty gritty details and probably solutions that way. I know sometimes it's easier to talk about solutions when you're looking at the problems. So, um, and yes, Tonya. Uh, just one thing. So uh, I've been core tech lead before and I just kind of want to make, make a note here for, for a better understanding. 
I do support adding a performance role to this release squad. Why? Because as a core tech lead, you have a lot of balls in the air and a lot of responsibilities for making sure backwards compatibility is there, uh, looking to make sure things aren't broken, making sure that it's um, things are compliant. So uh, having a performance lead to partner with would be very, very helpful to make sure that we have someone that's just, or a team of code leads that are just focused on one specific area. I think that's great. Thank you. It's super helpful to have that, that context. Um, Adam, did you want to share as well? Yes, sure. I, I need to drop shortly, but I just wanted to say that I will uh, take it as an action item to do a make post proposing a, kind of an automated testing performance environment, which we've been thinking about a lot. I, I was going to go directly to a track ticket, but I'm happy to write a make post about it just so we can sort of circulate it and get feedback from wider community and everything. So I'll take that as an action item to get that posted soon. Be awesome. Thank you. Is there anything else I missed from this discussion? Um, around, I mean, obviously the notes will come up and please, uh, I'll share a draft of the post in the performance channel if anyone wants to chime in and review it, but um, I'd also love, I love getting corrected in the comments if I missed something or um, you want to add something in. All right, yeah, let's close it out. I think we're at a good stopping point and this was really lovely. I really appreciate everyone spending an hour um, here. I think there's like 20 of us here, so that's 20 hours of human time talking about um, WordPress, which is very exciting and I take very seriously. So thank you so much. I'll recap this and try and find you all in the, uh, at you all in the, on the notes so you can find it afterwards, but otherwise let's keep chatting and keep contributing and just really appreciate it. All right. Thanks, See you everyone. all in Slack. Bye. Bye.